Hello, I'm Scott Florence and just now what I'm going to be explaining is what are quarks and leptons. Now I'm going to start off with sizes that we're all aware of and work down. Now everything around us, you, me, everything we see, are all made out of particles called atoms. But these atoms aren't as small as things go, because inside the atoms there are electrons, protons and neutrons. The electrons in a field around a core or nucleus of protons and neutrons. Now the electrons are leptons, which I'll get onto later, but inside the core, these protons and neutrons are made up of things themselves, and the things that they're made of are called quarks. Now there's six different types of quarks, up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. Up, charm and top quarks all have a charge of plus two thirds, whereas down, strange and bottom quarks all have a charge of negative one third. Now these quarks come together in either twos or threes, and in the case of protons and neutrons they're in threes. A proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark, which gives the proton an overall charge of plus one. Whereas the neutron has two down quarks and one up quark, which gives it an overall charge of zero. Now you may be wondering, why don't these two up quarks that are both positively charged, when they come together, why don't they just repel each other and fly off, and there would be no protons, and therefore there would be no us? Well, the reason for that is there's another force taking into account at these tiny scales, and that force is called the strong force. Now, the strong force isn't given values like all of the other forces. Instead, it's given colour charges, which I'm not really going to get into right now. But the strong force keeps these oppositely charged particles from flying apart, but it doesn't happen at scales that we're aware of because it rapidly deteriorates over a distance. Now I said before that they are, can also come in twos, and they do, and what they are called when they come in pairs are mesons. Now as you can probably tell these aren't as common as when they come in threes forming hadrons, aka protons and neutrons, but um, one particle can come together with another antiparticle, so long as it's not the same type, meaning that an up quark can come together with an anti-down quark, or it can come together with an anti-top quark and form a meson. But if it were to come into contact with an anti-up quark, then there would be something called particle-antiparticle annihilation, which is quite simply when a particle and its antipart come together they completely annihilate to form pure energy. Quarks also come in what's called three different generations. Up and down are in the first generation, charm and strange are in the second generation, and top and bottom are in the third generation. And as you go from first generation to third generation, the mass of these particles increases. Now despite all of these particles occurring in nature, all the atoms that we are made of and see around us are only made out of up and down quarks. Now the reason for this is the charm strange at top and bottom quarks are much less stable than up and down quarks because they will deteriorate to become up and down quarks. Now top and bottom quarks, other than in our particle accelerators, only really occur out in space where particles can fly at incredible speeds and not be slowed down and smashed together. Now moving on to what leptons are. Leptons are particles similar to an electron but we call them point-like because no matter how hard we try, we can't seem to manage to find any size to them. Now again, like with the quarks, there's six different types of leptons. There's electrons, electron neutrinos, muons, muon neutrinos, and taus, and taus neutrinos. Now the electron, mao, and tau all have a charge of negative one, and yet again they're increasing in size as you go across the generations from electron to mao and to tau. But the neutrinos are a bit different. They do not often interact with matter, they just tend to pass straight through it. If you look at your fingertip right now, there's probably millions of neutrinos just passing straight through, coming out from the sun, but we don't notice them because they very rarely interact with matter. That's all for now. If you have any questions, suggestions or corrections, comment down below. Thanks to all of you who've been favouriting, although I can't find out who you are. And I'll see you next time.